Before y'all drag me, remember I'm in my Lori Harvey era and she had to date a lot of bums to get to Michael B. So, before y'all drag me, just remember that. Thank you Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. Okay, this is probably my very first story time of dating a specific person. I've never been one to talk about guys that I'm dating, but I decided I have a change of heart and these men are about to be content, period. And I'm not here to drag any dude that I was involved with because that's not what I'm in the business of doing. If anything, I'm here to teach you guys things that I've learned in dating and different things that I'm reflecting on and kind of going back in time and being like, okay, I should have did this, should have did that. I see so many girls um, on social media, especially TikTok, talking about, you know, playing hard to get, showing that you're disinterested, playing games, going into their antics, yada, yada, yada. And I personally think that going into a situation with a guy that you're really interested in with pure intentions and with a genuine attitude is my personal way of it being like the best case scenario, regardless of if they're toxic or not. Because at the end of the day, if they are toxic and you went in with pure intentions, you're gonna get the same outcome as if you went in with toxic intentions. Because honestly, they don't like you or they don't care regardless. I'm sorry about the lighting and the mess behind me, but I figured, okay, if we're gonna talk about being genuine, this is my genuine life. It's pretty messy. I got clutter there, I got clutter behind me and it's dark as heck in my house and I have my laptop in front of me as a light source. So bear with me, but this story time is a little juicy. I'm not gonna lie to you guys because I just recently got out of a interesting situationship. I wouldn't call it a situationship because there was no um, sex involved, but um, it was somebody that I was talking to in hopes of it going further, possibly. A lot of you guys wanted to hear about the story time because I posted this particular post on Instagram and everyone wanted to hear about what exactly happened because essentially this was my Valentine or my not so Valentine because he was a guy that I was talking to around Valentine's Day and um, it ended literally on February 14th. We're gonna get into that today. I cannot wait to share with you guys and hopefully you guys can learn from me and my ridiculousness because I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was a little bit ridiculous with this particular situation in many ways. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Okay, let's do a little ad break for our amazing sponsor, which is Birch Living. Can't wait to get into this with you guys. And honestly, we need to talk about mattresses. We need to talk about sleeping because your girl needed to sleep after dealing with this man, okay? Okay, so Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that delivers you an amazing, non-toxic, incredible organic mattress. It is super comfortable and environmentally friendly. I actually love the concept of using anything that's eco-friendly and good for the environment and natural. This is a great way to get into it. I actually have one of their pillows right now that I sleep with on my bed, and it's just a great way to have a comfortable, amazing sleep that feels good and is good for the environment. What's really cool about their Eco Rest pillows is that they are made from recycled plastic. So freaking cool, you would never know sleeping on them. And your Birch mattress will come with two of those pillows. I actually gifted my mother the Birch mattress for Christmas this year. She brought it with her to her mountain house, which is her second home that she goes to. And she told me it is super comfortable. It feels super nice. It has a great light feeling to it and it allows her to have a beautiful night's rest. Okay, so you're gonna get a 100 night sleep trial. You guys are gonna be able to really see, is this mattress for me? Do I enjoy it? Do I like it? It's good to have that testing out so that you can really decide, and then if you don't want it and you don't like it, you can always send it back. But it's nice that buying something online and being able to test it out is something that you're able to do without feeling like you have to keep it and that it's something that you're afraid to do because you're worried that you can't send it back you do have that option. And it also has a 25 year warranty. And I also wanted to announce that Birch Living has came out with a new mattress called Birch Lux, which is a new premium design mattress that is extremely amazing and super comfortable as well. Now you guys can click the link down below to get your Birch mattress today and get $400 off of your first mattress today with Birch. Hopefully you guys are going to love it as much as my mom does and as much as I love my pillow. And um, yeah, guys, I think this is a great way to upgrade your bedroom and make it super comfortable and livable and just kind of create a new space for yourself. I think it's always nice to switch out your mattresses and start over. So this is the perfect way to do so. Now, thank you again, Birch Living, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get back into the story time. 
A little insight about me because I feel like this is definitely relevant in some ways. I have two sides to myself and I promise guys, I am not a Gemini, okay? I am a Cancer. A lot of you guys are gonna say this is not Cancer energy at all and I apologize to all my Cancers for being representation, but I have two sides of me when it comes to dating. One side is that I can be like really interested in you and fuck with you heavy and really wanna get to know you or I could be like really bored in a time of my life and entertain something that I'm really not that interested in and I don't see going anywhere at all. I know that is extremely selfish and I'm not bragging about it. It's not something that I love to do. I naturally do it when I'm bored. Um, I'm not bored often, but sometimes in my life, if I have like a, like a down week, I got all my videos out the way, I'm kind of just hanging out, I'm not hanging out with my friends this week, I might entertain somebody that I'm not interested in. I wanted to really talk about in this video why being genuine with guys will get you further or it will just get you to the same place. Trying and actively trying to like play games with guys literally doesn't work. When a guy is very interested in you, there's no reason for you to like be doing weird things to like get them to notice you more and things like that. Like being genuine and real from the get, sharing your feelings, showing interest is not something that we should shy away from. And it's like, we don't need to have like this hyper focus on independence and like needing to like always be in charge and kind of like acting like a dude and moving real shysty. Like there's no reason for that. Being genuine and real with your emotions does not mean being desperate to available or like a pick me chick or anything like that. Like you can still protect your peace and privacy and your heart by being genuine. Get your snack, get your drink, cause it's kind of a long story, but we're gonna talk about it. So a little peek into my current dating situation is because I am single for the first time ever, I am keeping my options open. I date frequently, currently dating a few people here and there. Um, no, I am not sleeping with all of these people. That would be crazy, but I am going on dates, talking to people around the clock. Hello, hi, I am not gonna narrow myself down to one person, especially after coming out of a relationship. And I think it's important to build your roster and have experiences with guys in your 20s. This is the time to do it. So, I've met some guys that I really liked. There's a guy in particular that I met that I really liked, but he was way too young. And by young, I mean 20. I probably will talk about him on my future podcast, which I'm going to be doing with Asia, so stay tuned. But he's a 20 year old guy that I met fresh out of my breakup. I was not expecting to like this person at all. It was very like a brief situation, but he has recently came back into my life and blah, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. He's like the only guy that I've talked to since my breakup that I'm actually interested in and I can't be because he's too young, he doesn't have his career together and he's kind of a mess a little bit. But physically he's my type. He's also very intelligent and like, and that's honestly what I care about. I meet this other guy, I wanna say like a month ago, and I was already aware of this person prior to meeting him because I know him through other people and I heard things about him that were like not super positive. So I kind of was already going into it like, what a waste. He also isn't really my type personally. Um, we are very different people in every way, shape and form. But I thought it was gonna be a good experience to like get to know him and I'm not like the type of person that's gonna be like, no, like I don't wanna be like, no. And honestly, very handsome, just not my type. So I can tell fresh out the gate, he likes to play games, like hardcore games. I don't even know what these games are, but I can tell the vibe is different. I talked to a decent amount of guys, okay? Older, younger, in the middle, okay? I also was living with a man for a good time. I know men and this man right here is like insane. Like in this type of way where he's just like very aloof, he disappears often, he's not communicative, but he also professes that he like likes you, he wants you, and like wants you to know you, and is like planning elaborate trips and things like that. And I'm like, like, okay, whoa, slow down. You're planning a trip with me? I didn't even know you even liked me, bro. Now, normally I would not entertain somebody who's playing games, but this is where Haley being bored comes in. I had the bandwidth at that time to entertain this situation because I wanted to see where it went. Future Haley right here. I'm actually editing as we speak. One thing I wanted to note is that I had no business thinking that I was gonna get anything out of this considering I was going into it with funny intention. Um, I already knew this person wasn't really gonna be anything that I wanted. Therefore, trust your gut. What are you doing entertaining something? Trust me when I tell you, I already know. It's clown behavior. That's on me. I take full responsibility. Right out the gate, he's planning trips, he wants to like take me on this date, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, after like maybe day four, I was low-key interested. I wasn't like, oh my God, he's so my type, but 
I was intrigued. I'm like, okay, hold on, wait a minute. He's saying all the things that I wanna hear. Don't get it twisted. This man still is not really communicating with me like that, but the things that he was saying when he was communicating, I, I liked hearing, okay? Like I like to hearing a, a guy be spontaneous because I lack spontaneity. I like to meet somebody who has that spontaneous vibe where they're like, oh, let me take you here and I wanna show you this and I wanna do this with you. And I'm thinking, oh shit, like, okay, like, I guess I'll be down, like, yeah, 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 like, okay, like, what you got for me? Like, that's the type of vibe I'm on. He ends up asking me on a date, and it was like a week from the day that he asked, and I was totally down, right? Anybody that knows me knows, girl gets ready. Like, I do the things I need to do to, to get this date going. The only thing I couldn't do was get my nails done, which I was so pissed about, but I could not get a nail appointment before. But I get my facial booked. I get my hair done. I have like a wig overnighted to me for this date. I ordered an outfit, everything. Because when I when I date you, just know I go all out. I even bought new perfumes the day before. Like I'm just that girl. I just want to impress you. Like I don't care. Like if you're not about to be my husband. Like I'm not about to do anything half-ass. It's just not how I am. So literally the day of the date, I'm so excited because it's been like a week. It's been we've been leading up to this point. I'm sitting getting a facial and this is around like three o'clock, right? Kind of late in the day, not gonna lie, because I believe my date was at seven. So I had from like three to seven to get myself together, but I knew I could do it. I had my facial at like three o'clock. I told my facialist, Carolyn, I'm like, I have a date. Don't do any extractions, yada, yada, yada. It's really important. We're going to the city because this is the reason why I really was so excited to go on the date was because he planned it in New York City. We were doing like, um, like we were gonna go look into a museum and then also go out to dinner. It was like a whole vibe and I was so excited. And I'm like, don't do any extractions because I just wanna look good. I want like a glowing facial, yada, yada, yada. She was like, okay, no problem. As I'm getting my facial, I naturally am always recording because I like to do like um, story posts for Carolyn to like represent her business because she's always kind enough to compensate my facials. And as I'm recording to like film me getting my facial done, I get a message from him. Odd, why is he messaging me so late? So he literally messages me, this is red flag number one, that he, had something come up with one of his clients because of work and he has to cancel the first part of our date, but can we still get drinks later around eight or nine rather than doing a date? Now you can imagine my frustration. I overnighted a wig, got an outfit and getting a facial, taking care of myself to the nines for a man who's gonna reschedule me after planning an elaborate date. I'm talking a museum, dinner, walking around the city, what a vibe. Like I was so excited and he deduced our date to a 9 p.m. drink, oh hell no. So I literally messaged him back like maybe like 45 minutes later and I pretty much said, I really appreciate you um, letting me know but I think I'll actually just stay home for the night. I wasn't about to have you deduce our date and I felt like this was the one thing, this date was the one thing that I was holding on to like to make myself think, okay this person's like a cool guy. Like. I already had heard not so great things about him, but to me, he's giving me the vibes that he's good. Well, this is a part where I don't like you because how is it that you suddenly have clients on the time of our date? I don't even, that's ridiculous. So I think he responds to me like immediately after. I was like, just kidding. Um, I was able to move my clients. We're gonna have our date at the same time. Don't worry about it. So I'm a little bit annoyed at this point because you don't even understand. Leading up to the date, I had like butterflies. I'm so excited to meet this person. I really wanted to get to know him. And now I'm like getting ready for this date kind of late because he like let me know about it at like 4 or 45, maybe five o'clock. And I was already been done with my facial. I was home and I had to get in the shower like later to like get myself together because our original plans came back. He ended up picking me up a little bit late for our date, I think he picked me up like a half hour late, which kind of annoyed me because I don't like people who are late for anything because I'm usually never late. We're driving to the date and, you know, which is to the city. And I pretty much told him like in the car, like flat out, like, yeah, like I'm not really like a fan of like what you did because at the end of the day, like deducing a date is not good for a first date. Like it doesn't leave a good first impression. Girls take, you know, a long time to get ready. There's a, a million things that we do to like leading up to the date. There's nerves, all of that. Please don't do that to me again. And like, I really vocalize that because at this point, I'm very much involved. I'm very serious about taking this seriously. Um, I originally was kind of like looking at him like this and like playing games with him in the very beginning. But once I decided, okay, like I'm gonna actually take this seriously, 
I meant that shit. Fast forward, we have a great date. It seems as if like we are into each other. We shared a kiss at the end of the night. It was nice. He dropped me off at my house, whatever and whatnot, ended up texting me when he got home. So I felt like, okay, this is, this is going well. And we continued talking throughout the rest of the week. We didn't have anything planned again, which I don't love because I do like when somebody plans something again because then I know, okay, you really want to see me again because if you like me, you're going to want to see me again. Keep in mind, the communication has not gotten better. Now at this point, I'm fucking annoyed because how is it that we discussed communication on our date. I said, come on, like, let's work on it. Like if, if you're going to take me seriously, you have to work on it. Cause really realistically what would happen was in the morning I would hear from him really early before I would even wake up. And then I wouldn't hear from him again until like maybe 6 PM that night. And then maybe again, one more time at like 9 PM. And that was really it. And that was our communication. And it was like always like that. And a few times he like legit disappeared, like disappeared. So like there was a day where we were talking up until noon and he disappeared from noon until the next day. What is that telling me? Something is telling me, okay, there's somebody else because no guy like just disappears unless he's disinterested in you or he has another bitch. I don't even know how we got to a place where we ended up planning another hangout and this hangout was at my house. Now, I know you guys can all call me a clown, the clown of the evening. I will wear it proudly. I know I said I will not invite people over, but, but I will say this. I let him know very early on we are not sleeping together, okay? We are not. And I, and I, and I defined those lines because I really meant it. Like when I want to like get to know somebody and I really like them, I don't want to fuck you. Like I just don't, I want to get to know you, um, before I share my body with you. And like, that's just important to me. And I'm not saying that I don't have casual sex. I do. I just don't do it with guys that I want to be with. Hello. What ended up happening was he was going to come over after work. Me being me. And now if you guys don't know this about me already, then here you guys are going to have it now. I am really truly like a nurturing homemaker. My friends call me like the mom of the group. Like I always take care of everybody when they're here. Like I always have people stay over, I cook, I host events and parties and things like that at my house all the time. And it's just natural for me. It's not like any skin off my neck. Like I don't look at it as like, oh, like I'm doing this for you. Like I actually enjoy it, it's fun for me. And when he said he was gonna come over for dinner, I said, you know what, like let me do this right. So my house was kind of a mess. I cleaned my whole house top to bottom. I mopped my floors, which I do mop, but I don't mop all the time. And this was a pretty big deal. I'm fucking mopping my bathroom floor. It's like, oh, if he goes pee in here, I wanna make sure the bathrooms are mopped. And I shower, I, I completely shave my legs. Like I did everything. And then I ended up getting straight to cooking dinner. I made a beautiful dinner. It was like a cauliflower situation. It was like tamarind cauliflower. I plated it and everything. And I get a text from him at the exact time that he was supposed to be here, pretty much saying, oh, I'm slammed with clients. I don't think I'll be able to make it. This should have been the day that I ended things, right? Because I looked insane. I'm sitting here sweating bullets because I got my whole house together. I cleaned up. I, I got myself together, put makeup on, did my hair, everything, cooked dinner for a man who's not gonna show up. Now, meanwhile, I do wanna also preface that this guy is 26 years old, very young, and I told myself I wouldn't date guys this young ever again, but again, he was constantly reminding me that he was a grown man, um, that he has his life together, that he's you know doing well for himself, and that he isn't like most 26 year olds. Mm, mm. Well, neither am I. I'm 24 and I'm really not like most 24 year olds. If anything, I'm like more like 34 year olds. I need people on my level, hello, hi. He just wasn't gonna measure up. So I was extremely pissed. To the point where I don't even know how I even ever forgave him after that, but somehow, some way I did. I think he ended up kind of apologizing. He doesn't know how to actually say I'm sorry, but he'll say something like, oh, I'll make it up to you next time. I like, I feel bad. Like, I didn't know that you was gonna go out your way. <laughs> you must not know me. So some way, somehow, I think he ended up coming over two days later to make it up to me, okay? So we had a movie night. Um, he comes over, we talked, we had, we had a good time. And um, I didn't make him dinner this time because I said, no fucking way am I about to do all that for you. And we talked and we kind of discussed the conversation of Valentine's Day um, because it was coming up. Now, this is where my first problem arises. This is where you don't want to tap into this part of your masculine energy. When you have to start facilitating and planning dates with a guy because you're trying to figure out like, do you even care about me enough to do this? You already are not in a safe situation because they should just be doing it themselves. Now, I also want to note that he tried planning a getaway for us um, since the beginning of when we met and he apparently planned some cabin getaway, but this was before 
we got to like really know each other. So I actually canceled way in advance. Like he was gonna plan it, I, I messaged him the day after. And I was like, I don't wanna go, we don't know each other well enough, and let's just be for real. I'm going away for um, in a cabin with a man, what do we think is gonna happen? What we think is gonna happen? I ain't fucking this man. I'm not fucking this man that I barely know. I went on one date with and he barely talks to me. That's ridiculous. So I ended up canceling and he was like, oh, how could you do that? I really wanted to do this with you, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, listen, you get to know me, you come over, we hang out, do more dates. That cabin getaway was planned prior to him ever coming over. Um, so I wanted to put that out there. So when he was here, I asked about Valentine's Day again and um, I did let him know that I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing that day and I might be busy in the day, but I would love for him to like plan dinner or something and he wanted to like take me somewhere and I said like, let's just do dinner, like let's do something low key. That's kind of what I would want to do and you know, I just wanted to go back out with him again and just get to know him better. Like, like again, I'm trying to like get to know this person and he was like, okay, I'll plan something. Okay, here we go guys, remember that. Remember that. I'm gonna keep it real with you. From the time that, that he said that till Valentine's Day, we were very rocky. Up and down, up and down, constantly fighting. I was trying to figure out if I even liked him at all at this point because his personality was very wishy-washy. I didn't feel like he really liked me like that, like he said he did, but his actions were speaking louder than his words, which was not working on his communication. He wasn't really a big words of affirmation guy. Like he barely ever paid me any compliments. Like I think he maybe complimented me about like, my tattoo once and he's complimented me about my hair, but he's never actually told me anything about my character, um, about what he likes about me or that I'm like beautiful or things like that, which is things that I like. And me being that I do value words of affirmation, those things are important for me to hear in order for me to feel like, okay, like do you even fuck with me like that or not? I also noticed that um, every single time that I would get the most out of him in a text message was when I would fight with him. So this is when I was kind of being a little bit toxic myself because I'm thinking, okay, me starting a fight with this man gets him to answer me. He doesn't answer me at all. And he answers me when I end things with him. Every time I'm like, you know what? You are just not the one for me and I'm like leaving. He would be like in my phone, like blowing my shit up. And I don't know, it kind of reminds me of myself because in ways that I have tapped into my masculine energy with guys because like I said, I'm gonna keep it real with you. There'll be times where I talk to guys, I'm just bored and I don't really care about them. Um, I have, you know, felt nothing for them, but the second they try to leave me, my ego feels bruised. And I'm like, wait a second, like, you ain't about to leave me. I don't even like you like that. Like, so then I try to like bring them back. That's what it kind of felt like. Like, it felt like he was always trying to reel me back in and try to like see where things go with him um, in hopes and efforts for me to like continue talking to him so that things could be on his terms. Like, I felt like he wanted to end things on his terms. He didn't want me to end things ever. So, yes, I did play into the shenanigans a little bit, fight with him occasionally and whatever and whatnot, but. I would like let my friends like read the text messages between him and I and kind of like see engage what's going on because again like I'm new to dating it's not something that I do often like with guys especially his age and um, I just like I don't I'm not like used to this type of behavior my ex was super low key and chill I never have experienced this before and the guys that I date other than him are like again very low key and chill he was like the first person that like was like very chaotic to me and like very erratic and just behaved like out of pocket and it was just a lot for me, I'm not even gonna lie. And I wanted to say all of this to to tell you that regardless if, if you're talking to a toxic guy, a guy that's you know extremely toxic, he's not like in the right frame of mind, he is a little bit emotionally unstable or he like is just not talking with you like that, um, acting disinterested doesn't work not texting them all day doesn't work you're trying to get back at them they don't care just stop and this is what's important about this entire story time is playing games with guys really doesn't work i literally decided mid talking to this person that i was going to stop playing games because i was kind of playing into the antics a little bit in the middle there so like when he would go hours out texting me when i got a text i went hours out texting him and like i was doing things like i'm like wait this is not me I respond pretty fast. I respond when I see the message, which my phone's always in my hand, so when y'all think I respond? Fast, you know what I mean? So I was playing into the games and I realized, uh-uh, we ain't doing this anymore. I don't care how toxic he is. I'm not playing into the shenanigans. I'm gonna still be me at the end of the day. Also, I will say that men are very smart in ways that we're not realizing. I'm not saying that men are like the smartest thing ever, but they are aware that you are playing games. They are aware that you are playing into the antics, you're also participating in the shenanigans, and okay, let's just see who um, 
doesn't like each other the most, who can play the game better? And it's like, I'm not doing this with you. Like, I'm a bad bitch. Like, if I say I like you, I like you. And when I leave, I leave. Okay? Like, I fuck with you until I don't. And then I don't. And that is your karma. Okay? So the day that I decided, you know, I'm not going to play games anymore. I'm going to be genuine. I told him how I felt about him. In many instances, I've told this person, I like you. I want to see where things go. I'm interested in, you know, whatever we have together. Things like that. Like, I was being very forthcoming, and he was receiving it and also saying the same stuff back. Um, and, I, and again, I want you guys to understand that in my mind, the things that I tell myself, right? No expectations. You know, if, like, this person doesn't end up following through with the things that they say, your life isn't over. Just because you didn't get what you wanted out of the situation doesn't mean that the situation is going to destroy you. So even though I am going into it with the purest of intentions and I'm going into it being genuine with this person, that does not mean that if he up and leaves that I'm broken, because I'm not. I genuinely have my own life, I have my own money, I have my own friends, I have family, I have support, I have a job, I have so many things that honestly take up a majority of my time that this person who took up a very small portion of my life which was my dating life and i do enjoy and i love companionship every once in a while um if it goes away i'm cool with that because honestly i got another okay on rotation and that's honestly the balance when you go with pure intentions and you know that okay let's just say you things up with me you you mess things up with me and i have to chuck the deuces i'm cool with that I'm cool with that. Like at the end of the day, like I'm gonna be good at the end of the day and that's what feels good. So it's not about, oh my God, did I share my feelings with him? Does he know that I like him? Let's just say he does know that you like him and you decide to leave. Think about what he's thinking. Damn, she was able to like walk away and still like me. Trust me, I promise you, it doesn't make you look crazy. You still decided to peace out. And let's just say they goes to you and you move on. That's still a win anyways. So don't even let it... <laughs> Don't even let it get to you like that when you share your feelings. Like, I am pro sharing feelings. I am pro being pure and real with people and not holding back. If you really want to say something, then say it. So I want you guys to remember that when he was at my house, he said, you know, I'll plan dinner or whatever. So on February 13th, I ended up texting him and I said something along the lines of, like, what's up? What's up? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, Aisha's here. She was here for like a week. She told me flat out. He ain't gonna do shit for you, girl. He ain't gonna plan nothing with you, girl. Don't even bother. And I'm thinking in my mind, what are you talking about? This is a guy that I mess with. He ain't about to do that now. This man really thinks that he'll get away with not even getting me flowers. Aisha, shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. I'm also thinking in my mind, okay, we have this fight, right? We have this fight on Valentine's Day and you still wanna be an active member in my life then what are you gonna do? You're gonna do late gestures. I'm not saying that I would accept a late gesture. I'm just saying that you would send flowers and chocolates and all of that stuff maybe days after. I didn't receive anything from this man. He literally didn't wanna do anything for me. So that to me proves, you know, hey, you thought you were gonna like have, you know, all the fun with me and have a zero investment into being with me and that's just not gonna fly. Well, girl, she was right. She was absolutely right. She told me that this man was gonna start a fight with me before Valentine's Day so he didn't have to do shit for me and guess what happened? He started a fight with me before Valentine's Day so he didn't have to do shit for me. Now I'm just assuming because this is the type of person I am, he probably had a bitch that he was gonna be taken out and it wasn't gonna be me because let's just be for real, he's not communicative, he disappears and he's emotionally unavailable. To me that sounds like a guy who is involved with somebody and especially if it's a person that he was with prior to you and like has a, has a past with this person, you will never win. You will never win in that race, babe. So just bow out. Now, if I had known he had a girlfriend or somebody in his life at the time and I had like definitive proof in it, like, I would have left because I don't do that, but I had no really like clue or idea. So he ended up calling me all kinds of names in our argument. Like you're delusional, you're a liar, you're crazy, you're making things up. You told me you had a date, Haley. You said you had a date. I never said I had a date. I maybe said, on like January 25th that I might be doing something for Valentine's Day, but buddy, we talked about this on my couch. I said to plan dinner, so don't even mess around. You just don't wanna do something for me and that's that's that, okay, that's that. Like I get it, like you don't like me, just say that, cause I really don't care. Like I'm not the kind of girl who's gonna like force you to like me, that's very middle school. If you don't like me then just like Peace out. I ain't gonna be your filler for your chick that's always dodging you. I'm not going to be like a placeholder. I'm not that kind of girl. I, I can't be that girl. I'm number one. I'm the main. And if I'm not the main, then I'm the nothing. 
than nothing. And also I wanna say that when I have to start tapping into my masculine energy of like planning dates, facilitating things like that, I no longer am interested. I'm not even attracted to you anymore. Because to me, that's the part of my masculine energy that I do not wanna tap into. Like, I am a very feminine woman. Like, I like when guys do stuff for me, especially when they know that I can do it myself. There's nothing hotter than a guy saying like, I know she can do it for herself, but I'ma do it for her anyways. Daddy, is that what you say? Oh, okay. Like, that's the type of girl I am. Like, that's the feminine energy that I tap into. So when I feel like somebody is making me have to go out my way to plan stuff, I lose interest. And I should have really seen the signs after, you know, he stood me up for my dinner that I cooked. But I guess I just assumed that he was going to just make it right because he would always say, I'm going to make it right, I'm going to make it right, I'm going to make it right. Mm, you never made it right. Valentine's Day was pretty much the last day I talked to this person. Um, I told him I was done. He was going off in a rampage. I ended up not responding. I went out with my girl, a shot, I went out with my family, and I had a great night. Um, and then, like, how the story ends for me is, like, I hit up my 20-year-old, and I was like, what's that? And I had a great time with him, because you know what? If we're about to be doing some funny business, I'm gonna do funny business with a hot-ass 6'2", beautiful man. Yeah, uh, that's all y'all need to know. I tell you this story to conclude that I, I did like this person. I used to tell them this. And I was able to still walk away with dignity and pride. I don't feel like I lost out on an experience. I don't feel like I told him too much. I don't feel like me sharing how I felt like did me, made me look bad or anything like that. Like it didn't. Like at the end of the day, you lost out. Like you mess with me and and I am, am, am done with you. Like I'm the type of person where I usually really don't give out multiple chances, but because I had the bandwidth with this one particular person, I was, you know, using a couple excuses here and there. Like, oh, he's young. He maybe doesn't mess with girls like me like that. So let me just give him a chance. Um, I was giving him a lot of excuses and a lot of like leeway. And at the end of the day, like he did exactly what I thought he was gonna do, which was play games. And I, I'm not in the business of doing so. So I think that everybody should start tapping into their real and raw emotions and feelings. Now, I'm not saying to like get fully invested, to get attached. We're still gonna do the detachment, especially if we have to. If a guy goes us or we goes them, we have to go into the detachment mode. But while you're out here trying to like entertain things and you wanna see where things go, playing games is getting old, it's getting tired, it's getting predictable. Guys, know when you're playing games, so just stop. It's ridiculous. And I promise you guys, you're gonna feel so good walking away from this situation because you're gonna walk away being like, I don't feel drained, but I feel like I was a real and authentic person. So if they don't like me, they don't like me for me. Rather than putting on a facade and making yourself seem like you're somebody that you're not, there's nothing sexier than being the woman who's like, wow, I really liked you, man. It sucks that I have to like leave you now because you didn't act right. And that's exactly what I had to do, girl. And um, you still win at the end of the day. Like I said, put in the genuine effort, be loyal, um, be real. I was very honest from the get. Yes, I'm still talking to other guys. He was letting me know, all right, well, you know, like, when am I gonna make you my girl? Like, I, wah, wah, you're getting cut. Like, I, you will never be my man in a million years, and that's it. And that's all, and that's it. And I'm not even mad at him. There's no hard feelings. Um, I think what I learned from that experience is to never entertain something for too long. And if you have to tell somebody something twice, they didn't listen to you the first time, which means that they don't listen at all. And me constantly bringing up the same thing over and over again, which was, why don't you communicate? I used to spend a lot of my time in my teen years constantly like wanting to do things to like get noticed more. So I would try to be like the cool girl and I would play guys the same way they were playing me in hopes that it would get a better outcome and in reality it didn't. And that's really the whole point of this video was I tapped into, in the very beginning, I tapped into that player side to me, which I do have it in me naturally and I also can do it actively if I try. But I decided to resort back to my old habits, which got me into my relationship with my ex in the first place, which was just being myself. And I think the right person will love you for you. There's no such thing as, oh, like, let me just show that I'm not interested in the beginning. And I've heard a lot of, like, you know, studies and theories about how men prefer having to work for something that they want. And okay, so create that boundary in yourself. You don't necessarily have to not give him your genuine self, but maybe don't give him sex. Maybe don't hang out all the time. Like constantly give him like a reason to come back. But having this overwhelming obsession with trying to play guys and trying to create distance between you and that person um, because you wanna like seem cool or you wanna like try to get them to like you more. Like it's just not gonna work if they're toxic, they're toxic. If they're not for you, they're not for you. If they are, they are. And that's just like how I honestly live my life now. Um, this person was not for me. It's very obvious from the beginning, but even more into it, um, 
when I started to actually say, okay, like, let me give this a real chance, I realized, okay, this person actually really is not for me. We don't have much in common. We don't communicate the same way. We don't have the same interests and we don't have the same respect for others. And that is huge. So definitely be yourself. I am speaking to all young girls and any woman or man that is trying to like be in the dating scene and wants to know like the best angle, the best angle is no angle. Have your own freaking life, hang out with your friends, have hobbies and things like that. That's the distance that you're automatically creating between you and a person. Um, and don't have any expectations and you're gonna be fine. Everything will be great, but playing people is just not the vibe anymore and guys will just know. So hopefully that helped. The way I view it is if you can't communicate with me, you don't like me because at the end of the day, the one thing guys really have a hard time, hard, hard, hard time faking is putting in effort. It is very difficult for a guy to put in effort when he doesn't want to. So when a guy doesn't put in effort, listen to them. They don't want to. So you be genuine. Don't play games, go into it with the knowledge that you're keeping it a buck, you're going into it actually really being like, this is who I am, this is my boundaries, I fuck with you, I like you, don't mess things up. And if they do, you peace out. That's just how life is gonna be from now on and that's what I'm doing. So yes guys, that is my story time of dealing with a very interesting character who I think was just totally not interested in me. He was definitely playing games and I honestly think that maybe he was bored and I was like his 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 situation for whenever whoever was ghosting him at the time and he just needed somebody to talk to or entertain and to hang out with and like I'm just not that girl like I said I'm a main or I'm nothing and that's just the way it's going to be so regardless of if a person um, dogs you out day one or day 40 it's never too late for you to have respect and say no and to walk away and you're going to always win so yeah guys I love you guys so so much I hope you guys enjoyed today's video give us a big thumbs up and comment down below if you guys want more story times um, this was a very interesting one for me but I really enjoyed it um, I love you guys so so much and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys for the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable yes. Oh, and um, did I mention that he's Dominican? Yeah, I'm sure you guys would have told me to um, not even try it. But I took one for the team. I took one for the team. Bye. <laughs>